We're adding a lot of people. We're adding sites. Registering over 200 every week of the year. Where are all these beautiful people from? I think we got 54 sites now. Yeah! I also want to commend Doc for being a great leader. Yes, I'm the executive director. Doc Smith, the leader of Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools, talks about growing enrollment a lot. It we're growing when everybody else is shrinking. Like all public schools, Highlands gets money for attendance. For this school year, $170.2 million in revenue. A lot of money for a lot of students. Highlands has around 15,000 adult students. Most are immigrants. But there's a problem, employees say. For the amount of money Highlands is receiving, do you feel like that is reflected in the education that students are getting themselves? Look at their graduation rate. It's abysmal. For the 2022-2023 school year, records show Highland served over 16,000 students in person and online. Of that, around 2,000 were eligible to graduate and only 448 did. That's just 20%. The school also offers trade programs like truck driving, but only 6% of students got a job in the field Highlands trained them in, records show. Adult education has low graduation rates. These students balance families and jobs. Even for adult ed, Highlands graduation rate is way too low, this administrator says. It's just that that number that actually benefits is so small for the amount of money that's coming in. And yet, and we just had another site in San Diego. We just opened in Oakland. We just opened in San Pablo, Richmond area. A 2014 law allows Highlands to operate outside its school district, Twin Rivers Unified. So this charter school from North Sacramento keeps growing, opening sites across California. During staff meetings, we would always hear, you know, there's a campus opening. More sites means more students. More students means more money. Critics inside Highlands tell us the school's leaders are capitalizing off of immigrants rather than truly educating them. They come here because it's safe. It's a place for them to have a better life. That's what the taxpayer wants from their education system. He insisted students do get the education tax dollars are paying for. This school belongs to you. On its website, Highland says one of its core values is to save taxpayers money. But in just five months, contracts show the school spent over $21 million, including over $8 million on technology. Technology coupled with human greatness is going to get us where we want to be. That's great, but are you giving the teachers what they need to actually be successful in the classroom? Because I never, I never saw that. With all we've learned, our students are now receiving Google Pixel Folds. Smith says he bought 19,000 Google Pixel phones for students, but only 448 graduated last year. We have absolutely zero consistent or reliable data that sh is linked to student outcomes. So as more sites open, who ensures the school is truly educating its students? Who is monitoring how tax dollars are being used? Three organizations are supposed to be minding the store. All right, we're going to call this meeting uh, to order. First, Highlands has a board of directors. The school's policy says the board must approve consulting contracts over $100,000. We sat in on the last six months of Highlands board meetings and found the board appears to have little involvement in the spending. So we filed for a list of contracts where Highlands spent $25,000 or more and found there's funds going to a lot of different places. In five months, Highlands spent over $415,000 on consulting contracts, those records showed. Per their policy, the board only needed to approve just one of those items, a $130,000 contract. And yet, we could not find any approval for that contract in the board's meeting minutes, after reviewing all minutes for the last four years. I remember sitting in board meetings, a point of inquiry for a lot of different people was like funding, like where is this going? The board is not overseeing the school spending, sources say, giving Doc Smith free reign. 
The school's fiscal policy also shows his spending power. Smith signs all check and bank accounts, approves grant submissions, and, quote, oversees the adherence to all internal controls. Unlike a school district board, the nine charter board members are not elected. I'll, I'll move that we keep Mary on board. I'll take a second. Oh, okay, my arm's been twisted. There is no limit to how many times they can be reinstated. Mary, welcome aboard again. Only four have experience in education, their bio show. We have board members whose children work here. Why would they regulate anything that impacts their children? Two board members are the parents of Highlands employees, sources say. But cops marry cops, teachers marry teachers. But we don't have a nepotism problem. Nepotism or not, this makes staffers afraid to go to the Highlands board. Several told us they also don't feel they can go to the Twin Rivers Unified School District, the second organization that's supposed to oversee Highlands. We were instructed not to talk to uh, Twin River and they would come. We were given kind of like uh, talking points. Twin Rivers Unified School District authorizes Highlands Charter Schools, but with locations 500 miles away, we wanted to know how does the district regulate those? There's new sites being opened all the time. And um, whether there's actual students and teachers there, none of us know. <laughs> We found Twin Rivers doesn't know either. Records show in the last six years, the school district has not visited a single site outside of Sacramento. In January 2023, they visited only five Sacramento sites out of the 50 across the state, all on the same day. Twin Rivers declined several requests for an on-camera interview. In a written response, the district said its oversight exceeds the legal requirement. But staff we spoke with said Highlands and Twin Rivers are too connected for the school district to provide real oversight. Some of the people who work, they were board members for Twin Rivers. Like Linda Fowler, who we introduced you to in part one. The longtime Twin Rivers board member is also a Highlands employee. What it is she does for us, no one knows. When asked, Fowler sent us the education code saying Twin Rivers does not dictate Highlands hiring decisions. And Highlands also paid over $36,000 to the consulting business of the former Twin River Superintendent Bill McGuire for just five months of work, records show. But the biggest issue with the district, our sources say, is when Highlands makes money, Twin Rivers gets a share. We make Twin Rivers money. When a school district authorizes a charter school, the district gets a percentage of the school's annual funds. It's called an authorizer fee. Over the last five years, Twin Rivers received over $9.5 million from Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools, records show. And it protects Highlands from district scrutiny, our sources say. And the money helps the districts, so that would be kind of like a lifeline that you would take away. We asked how Twin Rivers can provide oversight while getting millions from Highlands. The district said it goes well beyond oversight requirements by doing annual reports and interviewing Highlands school officials. That's why the district is entitled to an authorizer fee, it said, which, quote, does not present a conflict. For our investigation, we spoke with over 30 current and former Highlands employees both on and off camera and brought their concerns to the school district. Twin Rivers responded, saying there may be those who feel compelled for whatever reason to make allegations and cultivate chaos and distrust in an effort to undermine an organization or its leaders. The district said it's gotten no formal complaints from employees, but if someone did submit a complaint or concern, the district admitted it wouldn't necessarily act, but the complaint would be referred back to Highlands. Nobody can believe that these kind of things are happening. They go, well, that can't be, that a school can't operate that way. That's not possible, right? And because we have audits. Five years ago, Highlands got a serious audit, one that usually makes school administrators nervous. It came from the county fiscal crisis and management team, known as FICMAT. Once a FICMAT is initiated, usually schools are shut down. Highlands wasn't, even though the FICMAT audit flagged all kinds of problems, from sexual harassment to potential fraud. 
and it was due to, I believe, political connections that it stayed open. Highlands puts time and money into keeping political ties. During our interview, Doc Smith told us the school's leaders took trips to Maui, Pebble Beach, and France for lobbying reasons. Those places we go to, because we have to convince legislators, it, it, it's the cost of doing business. In addition to those travel expenses, the school spent over $652,000 on lobbying and legislative groups between July and November last year, its records show. The FICMAT audit said it had insufficient evidence to prove fraud at Highlands, but the audit relied on voluntary information and statements from employees. Anytime anyone voiced um, an opinion or some pushback, that person would usually just disappear. Employees who told us they're afraid to speak up. That threat looms over all of our heads. Even so, the audit gave repeated examples of what it called illegal fiscal practices. It did identify serious internal practices. We brought them to the California Department of Education. Irregularities in instructional days, inconsistent testing, the department would not go on camera, but did give us a phone interview with its head of PR, the deputy superintendent of public instruction, and charter school division director. Uh, we take this very seriously. They repeatedly pointed us back to the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Twin Rivers is the charter authorizer. So by law, Twin Rivers would be the reviewing agency. The district that makes millions in charter fees from Highlands. The Twin Rivers Unified School District is responsible for monitoring. The so the district as the authorizer would be required to review and analyze that. What's your message for the Department of Education? Wake up. Wake up. Uh, they have kicked it back to the local level, which is, which is standard, you know, in public education. Um, but when that local level is also and part of the system, <laughs> it doesn't work. So if Twin Rivers is not doing their job, does it become your job to step in and make sure Highlands is effectively using taxpayer money since that also comes from you? Um, we have reached out to the charter school, the district, and the county office of education. The department took action after we reached out. Six days after we sent them some of our findings and a list of questions, they sent a notice of concern letter to Highlands, the Sacramento County Office of Education, and Twin Rivers Unified. In it, the Department of Ed listed our findings, and for each one, the agency asked Highlands for documents, budgets, rosters, and policies. In the last few weeks, Highlands provided the documents requested by the California Department of Education. ABC 10 filed for and received what Highlands gave the state agency, and while we're still going through it, we already found inconsistencies. Highlands told the state agency they had 9,600 students enrolled in September 2023, yet the school responded to our public records request saying they had over 14,700 enrolled at that time. I'm curious how many complaints the Department of Education has received from staff of Highlands. You know, we're not aware of any Highlands staff submitting complaints to the California Department of Education. And yet... I thought, I better just reach out and see if I have any legal, you know, leg to stand on. Emails between the Department of Education and Allie show they should have been aware for years. Again, I was just like telling them, I'm telling you, this is actually happening. In the February 2022 emails, Allie told the department she was being asked to sign attendance for students that were not there. Many of us are concerned and do not want to put our credentials at risk by signing and or falsifying documents, she wrote, asking, is this legal? And they said, well, then you need to go to the county superintendent. Um, a lot of times we take it as far as we thought was safe to, but didn't want to put our jobs in jeopardy. Where she definitely could not go, she says, is her bosses at Highlands. Yet, that's right where the Department of Ed defaulted back to. They can notify the school administration. Um, so they could direct a complaint to the charter school governing board. So I think a lot of them have expressed concern going to the board. Um, Highlands specifically, you know, they have a large board. And so 
if an employee is struggling to get resolution internally at the school level, they do have that governing board level. Lindsay Curtis did go to the Highlands board. Yes, my name is Lindsay Curtis. And up until last month, I was the homeless services coordinator at Highlands. And she was one of the few Highlands employees who agreed to speak on camera while employed there. I get funded by taxpayers. They're who I'm accountable to. Four weeks after our interview, Highlands eliminated her position, saying they were restructuring. They gave her two choices, take a different position she did not want or quit. She resigned and a month later spoke directly to the Highlands board. Highlands eliminated without explanation the school's only homeless services role, even with more than 1,500 students experiencing homelessness and having just made a documentary video highlighting the services I helped provide and paying $300,000 to an outside production company for that video. All while I was never given any budget over the years to help students experiencing homelessness. Highlands doesn't tell you why they're firing or restructuring you, but my guess is I was too vocal or wasn't agreeable enough. What I do know is that the culture is cult-like. The quality of education doesn't get near enough respect, attention, or resources from upper management, and the spending is often exorbitant and irresponsible. Highlands has hundreds of talented and educated supervisors, teachers, and other staff, but their expert voices are never heard. None of the board members responded to her concerns. Instead, Highlands board member Sandra Betancourt ended the meeting saying, But you should all have great pride in yourselves toward building this to be the great institution that it absolutely is. She's the board member that's in charge of reporting complaints like Lindsay's back to the Twin Rivers Unified School District. I also want to commend Doc for being a great leader. Lindsay also provided each Highland board member with her concerns in writing. That was four months ago. She says not one of them wrote back. Where are all these beautiful people from? Any taxpayer or not taxpayer, you come to our campus and then you come and look at me and say, what a waste. Over the last year, one after another, Highland's employees reached out to our investigative team. Today, over 30 have come forward on and off camera. To make a stand for education. In fact, many took a risk speaking with us and sharing information. You are a whistleblower, you're employed there. Would be, probably be safer and easier to not speak up at all today. I care about education and our students. Not one called Highlands a waste. All believe in the school's mission. You have to trust in yourself. Highlands does beautiful things, and I want that to continue, and the world needs that to continue, but leadership has to do better. Leadership, that's where they say waste is happening. There's a lot of waste happening. There's a lot of toxicity happening. Highlands leadership says hundreds of millions of your tax dollars are spent educating immigrants. The reality of what's happening is really a sad story. In reality, few are graduating and getting jobs. It's gonna make a lot of people angry, rightfully so. They need to pay attention. With little oversight, our sources call this charter school the Wild West. Many of my colleagues referred to it as the Wild Wild West. So, in what seems a lawless land of education, they ask who is Highlands and its money truly benefiting?